Good Month. Proud producer and proprietor. Patriotic projectile party pop. Got some up to the brown people making trouble for your empire. Replace them with a charred freighter and a cloud of white smoke. So remember, if your next geostrategic boondoggle's going to ride, don't call us, we'll call you. Introducing Cognitive, Cognitive Interrupter, Interrupter Alpha. Alpha. Oh yeah! Oh no. Oh yeah? No. Scientifically formulated by men who look like doctors. This supplement has been proven in over one and a half studies to heighten critical thinking while simultaneously preserving your myopic Abrahamic nationalist worldview while still keeping you on a short leash of ignorance and fear. Ah! Results may vary from person to person. May take 104 weeks to see lasting results. If warts appear... Hey, Doc, what the hell is this? I don't know, but it don't look right. Please contact your local Jonestown chapter. And remember to check out and select Auto Shift for a sweet 45 degree win. The globalist Luciferians and their Islamist supplicants are pouring across the borders of several Western nations, including our own. The thrust of their zeal threatens to violate the sovereignty of our way of life, but we can never let it threaten our bodies. Presenting Homoguard, a male chastity phallic blocker, it's designed to prevent any jihadi penetration to your rectum while applying moderate pressure to the prostate gland to promote your masculine vitality. Homoguard. It is also equipped with an array of nodes to detect the brain activity of any potential Wahhabi salami near you, which will silently alert you with a subtle vibration. Oh my god! This is a true breakthrough in health and defense, but don't take my word for it. Oh my god made me feel safe, but I'm insecure in a whole nother way now. I never knew just how many Wahhabi terrorists were near me all the time. Thanks, oh my god. It's not a stretch of the imagination that our own bodies are under threat of an invasion because Homogod has stretched out far more than that for me. We can and will defeat the globalist scum on the home front, but we need to make sure we're well protected around back. Homogod. Want a casual dining experience that's as creepy as it is fun? No, 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 no. We have an abductable, shit, delectable selection of cheeses and sauces. And don't forget hot dogs. <laughs> Featuring wholesome live music entertainment that's not at all hypnotic. <laughs> Go balls deep on one of our many ping pong tables. Then come deep inside and see our newly renovated soundproof daycare. It'll be fine. Try our all new spirit kitchen soups and salads. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Don't let hunger get away with molesting your day. Pedos to pizza. Good times and creepy vibes or we'll eat your kids free. You mean kids eat free? Yeah, what you said. Not a green mark. Okay. Boom. Eyeball still messed up, but we're going to get in today about voter ID. Let me see if I can do something. Yeah, he's out of there. <laughs> you got to have that because today is the day that useless, some people call him Ulysses, we call him useless, it's Grant, died. Ulysses S. Grant was not only a drunk, he the type of drink that he favored had the coca leaf in it cocaine it was a a red wine with with coke leaves no wonder he sent so many people to their slaughter and he did he was a butcher he just lost wave after wave of men a lot of them were fresh off the boat immigrants from ireland or uh germany and he didn't care just let him die pointless the drunk he became he made the word lobbyist you got grants from the government right that's when the government gives you money it's just <laughs> granting you money yeah that's what it is might as well be solidified with that fucker's name he's dead allegedly from anal bleeding he had a fit at the battle of the wilderness where he cried uncontrollably like a toddler when lee licked him of course Confederate Special Forces also <laughs> snuck a uh, the smallest caliber cannon up right up to the officers' quarters and blew General Hayes in half, uh, which may or may not have been Grant's lover. He um, certainly had a special relationship with the guy. If he 
don't know if they were homosexual, but they went to the academy together and they had their whole career together. And he certainly loved him very strongly in a platonic sense at the minimal. And his body was blown in half and Grant nearly got it too. He also got hit with splinters in that fight. Oh, no, that was Chancellorsville. Same area, though, uh, <clears throat> for a cannonball hit the tent post behind him. But he cried like a baby after essentially it wrecked his career. They're all afraid of fighting Lee because Lee had been destroying everybody. It didn't matter who they put in there. Meade, Hooker, McClellan, whatever. He destroyed them all. Grant's like, I've had success out west. I'll go down there and whip these Virginians. He got flanked over and over again, routed, um, just destroyed. And he had every advantage, more everything, pick something. He had every advantage, especially the size of his army. He had veterans. He had all of it. Lee destroyed him. And so his reputation had been wrecked because... Look, he couldn't do any better against Lee than anyone else. In fact, he did a little bit worse than some of them. And then his lover was destroyed. I just couldn't believe it. But he did one good thing for the North. Is instead of running back to Washington, he sort of went diagonally south towards Richmond. Lost on the battlefield, but we're still going to march south instead of running away every time. Because he knew the attrition would work. If you just lost enough guys, even if it was three to one, two to one, five to one, even six to one, the South didn't have the one to lose. They didn't have enough men and they never did from the beginning on. And they uh they couldn't replace the troops. They couldn't feed the troops. It was over because of the blockade, which Wilford Scott had suggested before the war started and nobody listened to him. He's also the guy that tried to recruit Lee to fight for the North. And there's no way that Lee was going to turn his back on Virginia. And he had family who had been governors of Virginia, congressmen of Virginia. Several Lees signing the Declaration of Independence fought in the Revolutionary War. They're not turning on Virginia. And that's where Lee lived. He wasn't going to turn on everyone he ever knew. And he didn't believe in the trajectory of the country under Lincoln with consolidated federal power. He wrote as much I implore you to read the exchanges between Robert E. Lee and Lord Acton going back and forth, explaining the, the causes and motivations of the war from their side. And Lee was not for slavery. He set slaves free. He inherited them and let them go before the war. He didn't believe in the institution. And in fact, the state of Virginia did end slavery before the war was over. So did Tennessee. Didn't matter. They, that's never what it was about because it persisted in Maryland, Kentucky, Delaware, New Jersey, California, Missouri, all these Yankee states and Yankee controlled states continued the practice of slavery all the way up until the 13th Amendment for blacks. And it still continued illegally uh, for Chinese in California. But anyway, that's your little Civil War history today from the calendar. Make sure you get this next year if we do one. And we have our lovelies. You can see there are several rainbow frogs here. And there's one coming. The 25th is the month anniversary, month death anniversary of John McCain. And, of course, the 26th is uh, Scott and I's birthday. So if you want to send a happy birthday wish, go ahead. We're going to be talking about voter ID today. I'm using a new thing. Um, I hope all audio and everything's working. Okay, great. <laughs> that would have done it for me. So the website has had some issues. What happened was, I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff, but we transitioned off one host onto another one because it was cheaper and some other reasons. It doesn't matter. But when you do that, a bunch of stuff breaks. And... I'm trying to get people that transferred it to fix it, but they decided in, right after a transfer to be like, oh, don't contact me on Skype. Okay, I'll use your email. Cool, yeah. Send them an email, they get back to me, and I'm I'm like, 
not getting response to, could you at least say, Hey, I got this. We're in process or something. I get my mic. Like, yeah. Hey, we got this. We're in process. Then nothing for a couple of days. And then I, apparently they sent me a mail that went straight to spam. They said, you know what? Not this email either. Use this other email. Well, I never saw that. So I kept using the first one. Never would have been a problem if we just used Skype, but whatever. So um, I use the third one and the third time. All these things are broken. Oh, I'm sorry. You're 48 minutes late. Uh, our office hours are 11 to 8 p.m. America time. Okay. And we don't work on the weekends either. Okay. Uh, well, the site's fucked. So it would be really good if you did work on the weekend because I'm not asking you to fix anything that you promised wouldn't be broken when you transitioned it. Well, I'm not your IT guy. Yeah, but y'all the ones that broke all this stuff, so you should fix all this stuff, in my opinion. I don't know. I can go get an IT guy. Then I need all the back-end information and stuff, or just transfer us back to where we were. Oh, no, that's gone. Okay, I guess we're going forward with this. But then I got a letter this morning saying I'm going to work on it today. I'm like, hooray, thank you for working on a Saturday. That's a nice grown-up thing to do is fix all the stuff that you promised wouldn't break. Um. I don't know. That's it's bad communications. All it is like we're all pro A and C and all that. But it's, and I understand someone's business. They have these hours, that hours, whatever. I'm like, you know, I tried been trying to reach you since Wednesday because you changed the way we communicate right after the ball. You had all the leverage. You're like, oh, I'm not using this Skype and I'm not using this email and use this other one. And I didn't see it. And, you know, I'm not seeing it when I'm sending you mail after mail going what's going on here this is broken that is broken the widgets are gone woocommerce is messed up this is messed up it's been a headache anyway i got some ukraine news but i'm not going to get into that either we're going to talk about voter id because this is essential here's a map if this works of states without voter id all the states in gray don't have it you're like whoa why is north carolina on there because of cooper Governor Cooper, he's a cheat. Everyone hates him. North Carolina legislator passed um, or created a bill to pass to have voter ID. So if you don't have voter ID, what's the point of voting? People can just vote in a different county. People can vote on someone else's behalf. Well, Cooper vetoed the bill. And that's how you want to like, how did Trump win? North Carolina, and yet the, they got a Democrat governor. It's become a swing state because of cheating. You can see really the only state in the Northeast with photo ID is New Hampshire and uh, Rhode Island. That's it. Which is why it's always blue. These orange ones, you have to have ID, but you don't need photo so it's still pretty easy to fake you see these other blue states right like california obviously uh new york and so on they don't require you to have an id because racism they know that having ID and voter id is not racist they know this but that's how you get democrats in office the other method is mail-in voting because there's no way to identify once that letter's been sent through the mail, whether it came from the address it says it's from or not. There's no signature verification. There was in some states, but not in any of the states that Biden allegedly won. And none of the swing states. So there's nothing to prevent you from just getting a bunch of ballots voting for Biden or whatever, and then just stuffing them in the mailbox. Because when they get to the other side, they kick all the Republicans out at midnight. They're the only ones in there counting the votes. And lo and behold, we just got like uh, 800,000 Biden votes in a row in Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. You didn't. And they don't even have to even get them in the mail. They could just have them right there, pre-filled out on the printing press. Or off a, of, you know... Just unload one of those with a forklift and shove them through the machine. So easy to cheat. No one's there. Sometimes only two or three workers were there. 
there were no independent observers. County went on one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning. In some states, it lasted weeks. And then you have other states like Florida, huge state, by the way, votes that day, results are that day. But it goes on and on in a way smaller state like Arizona. For weeks after the election, they don't know the result. Some counties, you know. You have people voting with prior addresses who don't live in that county anymore or don't even live in that state anymore. You've got people voting through the mail. And you have people showing up where you don't have ID. And I went over this with my brother. He talked about this in North Carolina. I witnessed this. You go to the voting place. What's your name? They say, oh, Scott Dawson. Okay, where you live. Da -da 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 -da, street, whatever. Okay, go vote. Well, a lot of people went there, said their name, said, I'm going to go. to, And they said, what's your address? And they gave it to them. They go, you've already voted. No, I haven't. It says here, you already voted. They didn't get to vote. They were turned away. All someone would have to do is come in and go, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know, Bob Baker or whatever, and I live at Canal Street or whatever, and uh, they can vote. They're, you're wearing a mask, right? And so they don't know what you look like or who you are, and you can go vote for someone else. And all you got to do is take a phone book. You could vote on, you know, oh, that person's old. They probably didn't vote. Or I'm going to vote before they did take their vote away. Option B, you don't even need that. The person holding the list, the poll worker themselves, they could just scratch you off if they think you're a Republican or something. They go, nah, you already voted, even though you haven't. And they know you haven't. And no one voted on your behalf. They just go, nah, you already voted. There's no one checking. You don't have someone else with an identical list, you know, both doing it at the same time or all the different parties or whatever. It didn't happen. No footage. They don't film. It. There's no protection for your voting rights at all. There's so many ways to cheat and they cheat. And when people try to correct this, what do they do? What do the Democrat, they scream racism. Because they have they infantilize minorities, especially blacks, where they say, Oh, blacks might not know how to get a license from the DMV, or maybe they don't have access to a computer. Well, everyone else has to go to the DMV to get a license too. What are you saying? This race is more likely not be able to do that? What are you calling them incompetent? Most of them have been driving since they're 16. You can't vote till you're 18. You get two years to get an ID if you want to vote. Pretty sure it's doable. You can get an ID when you're 15. The learner's permit. You don't even have to get a driver's license. You could just get a voter card. That's what I have. I have that because I'm not driving in North Carolina because I live in Japan. Anyway, we had a shekel chat from... Shannon doesn't show the whole name for five and I don't see a message with it. Oh, here it is digging the, Oh, digging the uncle Ted shades, but hope your eye heals up. Yeah. My right eye looks like, you know, I got popped by George Foreman or something. Patriot poop bags <laughs> seven minutes ago says, Oh, that was the name. That's weird. It calls you Patriot Poop Bags here, but it calls you Shannon above. I don't know why. This Odyssey's thing. Something, whatever. We'll take it. I'll check the Bigot Arena real fast. Nothing in there yet. Okay. Well, it is what it is. So this is an example in North Carolina where it was like a purple state. It ended up going for Trump, but barely. But if you drove around there, it was nothing but Trump signs from one end of the state to the other. I understand him gaining in, oh, like Charlotte or something, or the Triangle area around Raleigh, because they're cities, and those are dependency votes. 
but there's no way he took Biden took some of the counties they claimed he he took or did as well as they said he did, unless you have votes through the mail and no ID. And you notice the very first legislation they did. What's the first? What did he do his first day in office? He bent the knee to ESGs and joint rejoined the Paris Accords, and then they had HR one to get rid of voter ID on the federal level for federal elections. Fortunately, most states put in their own rules, say, no, you have to have photo ID to vote. Georgia being one of them that has since from 2020 to now decided, yeah, maybe we should have voter ID. Maybe we should have signature verification. And they're punished for that. It's like North Carolina was punished because they didn't want to have transgender bathrooms or allow men in the women's room. Um, professional sports events and things were moved out of that state and into other states. This is a loss of millions of dollars. But, you know, that's the wokeness. Well, that doesn't work now. You've seen a lot of these woke go broke uh, situations. When people can control the market... They're going to say, well, I'm not doing that. Netflix down, Disney down, all these media outlets way down for going woke. Because it's disgusting. You got this little 5% or so, not even, that are completely brainwashed, that run around screaming about uh, all this identity politics nonsense. And they don't realize that they're in an echo chamber. Because people... By and large, when you talk about pregnant people instead of pregnant women, you say pregnant people, nobody, right, left, center, agrees with that. Only extreme, mentally disabled, really, radical left, thinks, yeah, men can get pregnant. No, they can't. If you can get pregnant, by definition, you're not a man. You're a female, which means a woman. You have a uterus. It makes you a woman. It is defined biologically. It is not defined by identity. But not according to Webster's Dictionary. They have been pressured to change it. All the transgender lingo is going in the dictionary now. Of course, Daniel Webster was a Yankee. It's disgusting. And if you don't stand up to these bullies, it will never end. It will never stop. You're getting trans species now. People wearing cat ears and a tail not for fun not for some sexual fetish but like because they want to be a cat and the attention and the bullying that comes with it they want to force people to call them a cat because it's a power trip and they become untouchable apparently there's some singing going on in the hallway <laughs> going back to odyssey let me move entropy down yeah. So what are they going to do this time? Because the Democrats are going to get slaughtered in November. It can't come quick enough. So what are they doing? Well, they're already talking about a new variant. Right? They're already talking about it. They're already talking about the need, especially in these Yankee states, Pennsylvania in particular, that, oh man, we might even have to do lockdowns again. They aim that high thinking, no, we're not going to do that. So, you know, it's like negotiating and you uh, overprice and then bring them down toward the middle. But that's where you wanted to be anyway. They're playing this tactic. We're talking about lockdown. So maybe they'll really try to do it. I could see that happening in New York or San Francisco or something. Reinstituting mask lockdowns. And they don't understand how they're so divorced from reality. They live in such an echo chamber. They don't understand how off the mark that's going to be met by the public because they live on Twitter and Twitter has sanitized itself of anyone interesting, anyone intelligent. There's nobody left practically. And so it's all far leftist garbage and it rewards you. It's that it's that malignant narcissism where someone else can build a giant channel through their labor, through their work, become sort of a web liberty or whatever, have, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000, a million followers, and then you can just comment on that 
instant fame for you because you you're gathering all their eyeballs that they work for and you can just uh say something really rude and get attention and so it attracts those kind of people and who gets to say whatever they want the radical left they can be as mean as they want they can libel on there if they want to uh gang up on somebody it doesn't matter because and that person is not even allowed to defend themselves like you're there but you're tied down because if you say one thing back to them, even in defense of your own character and people calling you Nazis and stuff, you'll get banned, not them. That's what happened with me and Black Lives Matter. I just kept posting videos of myself defending blacks against police abuse. It stretched all the way back to 2008, long before Black Lives Matter existed, because they were saying, call me a racist and all this stuff. I don't like police abuse toward anyone. I've always stood up for blacks, Arabs, uh, Muslims, wh whatever, whoever is getting shit on of the day, whites too, you know, didn't matter, but it, it wrecked their narrative. And we're like, well, here I am talking about Alina Thomas. Here I am talking about this, 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 you know, what's weird, Eric Gardner and so on. They don't hone in on these clear cut cases. They hone in on stuff like Brianna Taylor. I'm like, her boyfriend shot through the door at the police. They're shooting back. She didn't have a gun, but he did. And he fired on off. Like that is a that is a debatable situation. Eric Gardner in New York getting choked to death on arm until he died on film. That is not a debatable situation. And all those cops got acquitted in New York. Of course, Yankee State does have police abuse and racism. Anyway, you know, there are cases like that. They kill white people, too. They kill American Indians. They'll kill Hispanics. Cops are out of control in certain areas. But I do not think that is an intrinsic part of having a police force. You just get rid of cops. Get rid of shitty cops. Reinstitute the police academy. Get rid of red flag laws. Qual you know, all this qualified immunity crap. There's a whole bunch of reforms that could go through. Because look around the world. Like, police don't act like that in Japan. Well, they don't need to. There's not a lot of crime in Japan. But they're not shooting people. They're not beating the crap out of people. They come and wrap you up in a taco. If some drunk is being belligerent and swinging on people, yeah, they could go judo, throw him on his head on the concrete and handcuff him and drag his face across the gravel. But, but they don't. Just witnessing that violence could hurt other people psychologically. It's what they do. They get a giant blanket. And they just run around him in circles and wrap him up like Spider-Man. Where he can't move, which is totally embarrassing. Shame is really detrimental in Japan too. So if you're getting wrapped up like a taco and embarrassed, that is a huge deterrent, but it's not physically violent or painful. And they just throw you on the wagon, take you to jail until you sober up. And then they usually let you out because they don't think like being drunk and fighting and stuff is that big a deal. It's just like, okay, go spend the night in the can be embarrassed. It goes on your record, whatever. And you're let out because when you're sober, you're not really, a problem anymore most of the time and if you're the same person over and over you're going to get a different sentence but you're not cops in america love it when they can pick off some drunk idiot because that's their chance to beat the fuck out of somebody that they physically never could do that to if they were sober and if they weren't police and if they didn't have weapons they weren't ganging out of them they get off on the violence they enjoy hurting another person because that's the kind of people they're recruiting these losers, they got picked on in high school, whatever, and they become a cop because they're on a lifelong quest of revenge to hurt anybody that even look like the kind of people that hurt them in their past. A lot of cops are scared of blacks. And so, but once that uniform's on, they get to beat the shit out of a black guy. And it's fun. They get off, we probably go home and jerk off. Try to make them cry. That's a bonus. Because that's why I pick on teenagers. If you beat the shit out of an 18, 19 year old, they might cry. And they they just fucking love it. They they eat that up. 
bunch of old older men, 30s or whatever, beating the fuck out of teenagers who aren't even fighting back because you're the police and they don't want added charges and are probably, you know, incapable of it anyway if they're drinking or whatever. It's disgusting. They prey on they prey on young boys. It's really stacked against young boys in America, not only with police and stuff, and it's not just blacks, it's all young men. They want to hurt you. They don't try to de-escalate situations. They try to escalate situations. Stop resisting. They come to your house, shoot your dog. <laughs> Fuck those cops. But it's not every cop. It's not every county even. It's not every police department. It's just everyone I've ever seen. <laughs> we had one says... From the capitalist pig, should communities, should, I gotta move the glasses, sorry. Should communities police themselves? No. Uh, not unless they're real small. That won't work. You just need better police, a better system. The standards to become a cop, first of all, I don't think people see the relationship here, but the physical standards need to be stringent. When you see these fat, out of shape, loser cops, they're the ones with the chip on their shoulder the most, the ones that want to beat the fuck out of somebody the most, right? You can weed all that out by having a higher standard uh, physical test where they do the little course, you know, climb a rope, go over a wall, crawl through the tires, whatever, that kind of stuff, like basic training the army or something. Because the kind of self-discipline, like when someone's in shape, they're not just, oh, they're in shape. This is a signal that that person has to have some degree of discipline for their diet, exercise, or whatever. What you're really, what's really reflecting is not just, oh, this is what my body looks like, see my muscles or whatever. It's, I have enough self-control not to let this go to waste and eat sugar all day. Sit in the car all day like most police do. That would weed out an enormous amount. And it, they also have other options. A bigger dude doesn't have to go straight to his gun or his taser. They can intimidate them to comply. Or they can just tackle them down and handcuff them. They can catch them when they run away. They can run after them instead of just whoop, bang, shooting them in the back. If they raise the standards for the physical, like, entrance exam or whatever, that would get rid of a lot of these fat cops. They get rid of a lot of female cops, too. Shouldn't be there. If you cannot arrest someone without using a weapon, you shouldn't be a police officer. I know there's some other big guys too, but you got a partner and whatever, and you still have those weapons, but you shouldn't have to, the more weak you are, the more afraid you are, the quicker you're going to go to the pepper spray, the handcuffs, the gun. And a lot of times, once they have the person completely restrained, then they continue to spray and beat on them because they're afraid and, and now that person's helpless and they get off on hurting them. Those kind of people shouldn't be police. If that happens once, you should be fired. But they don't. It's a like a fraternity. They all do it. And if you report on them doing it, you'll get fired instead of them. There's so much corruption. They have an IQ gap. If you're too smart, you're not allowed to be a policeman. That really sucks for detectives. They're not doing detective work, the deputies and stuff. They're not this cops mostly are road pirates. They go around mostly giving younger people speeding tickets and parking tickets to generate revenue for the state. That's their job. When there's a shooting, they hide outside until the shooter kills himself. Most of the time. They're not going to risk their life for you. It's not like the cops in the sitcoms where they run around and get the bad guys and do car chases and have shootouts and stuff, and but they're always restricted by the rules and, oh, if I could only break... No, they openly break the rules. 
Shizu Kani Shite Kurasai. They openly break the rules. They don't risk their lives and will not. There's none of this heroicism or anything. If there was, people would admire cops like they do soldiers. There'd be at least some degree of, well, wow, well, thanks for your service, whatever, that lip service or something. But no, no one looks at cops like that. They're like fucking pig. Because everyone's like, oh, I was going six miles an hour over. You're going to pull me over for that. Give me a ticket. Raise my insurance. All It's just an ugh. Universities do it on purpose with the parking system. They give out more parking passes than there are parking spots. So every single morning when students come to school, it's a game of musical chairs. Someone's got to be last and they won't have a place to park. But then they leave open all these parking spaces that are illegal right next to the legal ones, knowing if there aren't any more spaces, you have to park in one of them or you're going to be late for class or miss it or whatever. So every morning they just go there, see which sucker and students get up early and earlier to win the game of musical chairs, right? If you have to drive to school, there will not be a place to park because they gave out more passes than there are spaces. And it's just revenue. How is that legal? They did the same thing with textbooks. They changed one line. Mandate that you have to have that book from that store. And by the way, it's 200 bucks. They don't care about education doing that to you. It's a gambit to get more money for the textbook. It's a business. Universities are a business. And nowadays, they don't even teach you anything. You'd be better off taking the money it would cost to go to college, especially if you're one of these morons taking loans, and just starting a business or using it for rent while you and getting a job and gaining life skills. Because you're not getting life skills in college. You're going to end up going out, getting a job, doing two weeks training and learning what you're supposed to do on the job because you didn't learn it in school. Not always. And I went to college. I went to a very nice college, College of William and Mary. And I do use my history degree a lot in the sense that it was, you know, forced research and sourcing and stuff, which I can take that same skill and apply it to government or whatever. I'm good at digging things up, finding primary sources. You can see, you know, a thousand something sources in the new mech film. It's a skill. But I could have done that anyway without without going to school. Would have taken more self discipline though. Anyway, it's I don't even know if it's worth it. Like if you go into college, get a real major, not one of these BS. I majored in you know like uh, feminism or whatever. Get a real major. Get a business degree. Get something useful. Don't become an English major. Don't become a ninety ninety studies major. Do something legitimate and have a goal and realize that piece of paper is nothing other than saying, I did this bullshit for four years. Thus, I have self-discipline and I'm, I'm able to do things I don't want to do. So hire me, <laughs> whatever. And it's about networking. Networking is everything. It's all about who you know, not what you know. Sad, but true. Five came in from the capitalist pig. I should have been more specific. What I meant is, should police officers be recruited from communities they are in charge of policing? Would that create more accountability? That does seem to be better. And, of course, you always have your state troopers who can go anywhere in the state. But the problem is, if it's a very small community, you end up in that good old boy network, which can be hell. Because the cops just do whatever they want. And they know everyone. And, like, a little click takes over. In a larger community, that can work. At least enough, it's like a balance. Enough people know them to hold them accountable, but they don't have enough sway to to take over the area. I just I don't think that makes that much of a difference. Um, it would be something like if they're from the area, they already know where the drugs are and all that, you know. But they never do it. Like there are open drug dealers, Hatter's Island, for example. Everyone knows who it is. And they never get arrested. Cops know where they live, know they're doing cocaine and stuff out of that house. And they don't touch it. 
And a lot of it's because they're doing it too. The corruption, is, like if you think the cops aren't doing drugs and all the stuff that they arrest people for, you got another thing coming. It's really bad in the U.S. There's no standards to become a police officer anymore. They've lowered them to the point for the sake of diversity and stuff that anyone can become a cop. And a lot of crooks and corrupt people become police. Is mostly all they do is give out traffic tickets and now and then go to a domestic violent call where 50% of the time it's alcohol, the rest is some other drug, and beat the fuck out of some guy. We don't have, unless you're in Chicago or something, like murders and stuff going on every day. But even then, the DAs and stuff, you catch the bad guy looting the store or whatever they're doing. And they're out the same day. They don't stay in jail. You have repeat offenders over and over again. Even when they rape people, shoot people, steal from people, they can't keep them in jail. So what's the point? Like, why am I going to risk my well-being to go arrest this person and they'll be out in 24 hours? And so they don't. They even quit going to certain areas. And there might one of the reasons there might be more minority crime is cops won't touch it. They're like, well, especially a white cop, they're not going to go to a say a black area and arrest somebody because if you know anybody's filming it and yelling enough, they'll label him a racist and he'll lose his job. The only thing that'll get rid of a cop isn't the, all the police abuse they do. It's calling him racist. It's just like this woman in Wales rugby player beat up another player because that player and her friends who are black lives matter activists got in her face and she grabbed her in the hallway as she's trying to leave and the white girl turned around and slugged her and the other girl fell down and started crying and then the white girl left and then they come up with a story she hit me eight times in the face and called me the n-word he now here I don't know whether she did or not, but they have conflicting stories. And this girl has no history of racism or violence in her, you know, ever. And, you know, she's the one who invited her to the room and had her friends with her. And they're Black Lives, My Black Lives Matter activists and were heated. You followed her out into the hallway as she was leaving. So it seems pretty clear you're the aggressor. You grabbed her. She didn't go out in the hallway and then turn around and hit you. Like you followed her out in the hallway, still arguing with her or whatever, and grabbed her. And that's that there is a witness that saw that too. But she's like, Yeah, I hit her, but I didn't call her the N-word. And what's sick about this story is let's say she's just an asshole that was losing an argument, whatever, and just said I'll just wham, hit her in the face out of the blue, sucker punch or something, right? Assaulting somebody would be dealt with but you'd still be able to play rugby and all. You just, you know, suspended for a game and whatever the assault charges were or something. But saying the N-word, well, not only are you kicked off the team, you'll never play anywhere. You'll be thrown out of the whole university. Like the, the crime of calling someone a word has more consequences and punishment than punching somebody, especially if you're a girl and you hit someone. You don't really get, in that much trouble as a woman hitting somebody, slapping somebody, whatever, especially if you hit a guy. If you hit another girl, you might get in some trouble. But if you touch a minority, all that person has to do is say, they said the N-word. And even if you come out of it unscathed and it's on film and you didn't say it, you clearly didn't, there's no evidence for whatever, the accusation alone is still going to get you removed from society. And you saw this writ large with Obama bombing Libya murdering thousands of black and brown people. But at least he didn't say the bad word. You can kill them, and that's okay. And they loved Obama before and after that. But don't say the wrong word. We have a race obsession problem, and that bleeds back over to voter ID. Look at all these states. No voter ID in all those gray states. And the only justification they can come up with, is, well, it's racist to have ID. It's the entire Northeast, practically. There's Maryland, Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, 
Right. It's disgusting. Maine, too. Massachusetts. You know, and of course, the Californians, right? The question mark there is right in the middle. What the hell, Nebraska? <laughs> I want to show you something else. I'll keep that. I'm going to show you something else, if I may. Going all the way back to 2020 debates, right, where they said it was all liberal moderators. They wouldn't let Trump talk. They wouldn't ask Biden any hard questions. They refused to debate foreign policy. They wouldn't ask him about his energy policy. So Trump, you know, being rude, just butted in and said, is he going to get rid of fracking? Is he going to go after the oil industry? And I want you to know today, because he did. He went after fracking. He went after the oil industry. And now look at your price at the pump. And don't blame it on Ukraine. This was already happening. The inflation across the board on everything, food and so on. Here is the first clip I want to show you. Energy, and then I have we are follow. energy independent for the first time. We don't need all of these countries that we had to fight war over because we needed their energy. We are energy independent. I love solar, but solar doesn't quite have it yet. It's not powerful yet to, to really run our big, beautiful factories that we need to compete with the world. So False. it's all a pipe dream. But you know what we'll do? We're going to have the greatest economy in the world. But if you want to kill the All economy, right. get rid of your oil industry. You want and, and what about fracking? All right. Now, let me now let me have, have let me allow fracking. Vice President I Biden to respond. I never said I oppose fracking. Y you said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. We, we are we are going to get rid of fossil fuels. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we would we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. And the next piece, there's no follow up on any of this. And he did get rid of fracking and oil rights and he did destroy the economy. We had oil independence and now you've got five dollar gas. Would he close down falls, the oil industry? Falls, would you close down the oil industry? By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I would that's transition. a big statement. That's it is a big statement. That's a because big statement. I would stop. Why would you do that? Because the oil industry pollutes significantly. Oh, I see. And here's the deal. But that's a big statement. That. Well, if you let me finish the statement, because it has to be replaced by renewable energy over time, over time. And I'd stop giving to the oil industry, I'd stop giving them federal subsidies. He won't give federal subsidies to the to the gas. Excuse me, to the to uh, solar and wind. Yeah. Why are we giving it to oil industry? We actually do All give right. it to solar and wind. We and that's maybe the biggest question. statement in terms of business. That's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically, what he's saying question, is he is Mr. going President. to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President Biden, let me give you ten seconds to respond, Ohio. and then I have to get to the final question, Vice President Biden. He takes everything out of context, but the point is, look, we have to move toward a net zero emissions. The first place to do that by the year 2035 is in energy okay. production by 2050 totally. All right. One is final question. Is he going to get China to do it? No, we're finished with is this. Is he going we have to, to get move China on to, to our do our final it? question? No, we have to I'm move going on to rejoin our final Paris question. Accord and make oh. China abide by what they agreed to. All right. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos or whatever MSNBC. She kept cutting them off. They would not. This is a very important conversation. Let's talk about energy policy. And this liberal woman says, ah, da, 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 da. shut up. Is he going to gut the oil industry? Yes. And he did. And now you have the consequences for that. Did he get it rid of fracking? Yeah, he did. And now you have the consequences for that. And did he get China to comply? No. Did he join the Paris Accords? Oh, yeah, for ESGs. Oil independence, too. Now they're completely dependent on Saudi Arabia. He went over there and begged to get more oil. They told him to F off. 
Now you have Saudi Arabia buying oil and gas from Russia so it can resell it to America at a price. Unreal. And this is what happens when you don't have voter ID. They steal it. They put puppets in like that. But hey, it's been great. It's been great for BlackRock and Vanguard. It's been really good for a lot of these banks. Gobbled up property during the COVID hysteria. Put all these government subsidies in ESGs. Then they gut the military. They gut the hospital system with their mandatory vaccines. You've got a shortage of longshoremen and truckers. And the biggest thing with the COVID hysteria, there's a severe lack of employees, especially at lower skilled jobs. And the person sitting there, you know, at their own kitchen table, as he likes to say, trying to think. I don't know if I should work or not. If I get a job, I lose my check. They're getting a government check to do nothing. So you have restaurants and stuff, even when they were finally allowed to open again, they have no employees. The employees are like, well, I'm not going to go to work. I'll lose my check. And if they can make almost the same amount doing nothing and keep all their leisure time, and living off other people's tax money, then they will. Why work and get money when you can not work and get money? So they don't work. Welfare doesn't work. It turns out if you pay people to not work, then they won't. Duh. You think, oh, they just need that because they're trying to work and can't. And so that you just floating them. To no. You're paying otherwise productive people to stay at home. You're giving them an incentive to not get a job. The possibility of growing broke is why people work. It's why people work where they don't want to work. And it's why while they're doing that, they try to get a better job. Because the option just sitting on your ass and playing games all day isn't there in a normal functioning society. Or it's work fair. It's there for a limited amount of time. And then the checks stop or they start getting reduced. Now, if it was universal, then people would work because, oh, I can get my check and my salary. Well, that's the launching pad. But it isn't. The real universal basic income is zero. If you don't work, you get no money. If you work, you don't get any money from us. You get it from your employer. That's how it's supposed to be. You're undermining the entire structure by paying people to sit home. And I would like to say about the restaurant business, you know, they might want to think about it. Get rid of tips and just pay a regular wage. I think you'd have more customers because it wouldn't be, they're adding 15% to the bill, 10% to the bill. Plus, in some states, there's a food tax on top of that. If you're in California, unless you're super rich, you're not going out to eat. Like Whatever you buy, and then it's a mandatory tip. Well, that's not a tip. If you have to pay the tip, regardless of the service, that's just another tax. And yet the restaurant owner is only paying them like $2.30 an hour and saying, just get it off of tips. You're putting the burden of, paying the employment on the customer instead of on the employer. But why do we have tips instead of living wages? Women. Because a girl, a young girl, especially if she has a low cut shirt and keeps bending over to show part of her titties to the table, she'll make bank on tips way more than she's going to make on a wage. That's a little bit of sexual exploitation. They're doing it themselves. It's their choice. They're like, I'm going to dress like this and I'm going to flirt and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bend over and let them look down my shirt, stuff like that. And then I'm going to get, you know, $25 tip, $100 tip. Some of them, and it's all not taxable. It's all cash on paper. She only got a small amount from the wage, but she's making tons in tips. 
So they like to keep that system. And that's why that system is there. And they're like, oh, men earn more on average than girls. I'm like, uh, girls' income's not really accounted for. As a large swath of that is waitressing. And they're making a lot of money. And it's in cash. And they don't declare it. Imagine having that advantage, man, you know, in your youth. Being able to just go $200 a night or something. All cash. No taxes. You do it over and over again. You couldn't make that money unless you sell drugs. But waitressing in a lot of places is just quasi prostitution. But that's why they have the tipping. So they don't have tips in Japan. Men and women give you good service and they get paid a good wage. They don't have to flirt with you or demean themselves or whatever. They don't have to put up with the customer's BS either. They're getting paid what they're getting paid. And yet the service doesn't decline. It's way better service in any industry, not just waitressing and, and waiters, airlines, every, everything better in Japan because they have human decency. They raise them differently. Most households have two parents. That's a big starter because they didn't gut themselves with welfare. But fortunately for Japan, the conservative party, even though it's called the Liberal Democratic Party, it's conservative. And they've been in charge for the last 55 years in a row. So we have a functional society here. Oh, cool. This new thing it actually shows the chat on here. I don't have to open up all these screens. That's pretty cool. Although the doesn't show shekels, so I do have to. RM Jims, who slaps down, and Andrew Jackson says, Happy birthday to the Dawson brothers and Andrew Jackson, and thanks for all you do. Hey, thank you very much. I was reading that before I saw the rest of the sentence. I mentioned Jackson. He is on the 20 and he did kill the bank. A little bit of irony there. But he went after it. They, monetary policy used to be a major issue in American politics from Jefferson to Jackson. And then other than Dr. Ron Paul bringing it up in, in the presidential races in, in like 08, 12, they haven't talked about it since. They're going to be raising interest rates. They don't let the market decide that. They just, the Fed does it. It's too much power and too, too easy to mess up when you have all your eggs in one basket, one size fits all. One bad decision, everybody pays. Shouldn't be like that. You want diversity? Diversify that. Have market competition. Have regional competition. Competition is good for everybody. Welfare is killing us. There are, I'm excited to be going home for the first time since the pre pandemic or whatever. My grandma's on a pacemaker. This time she's definitely on her last limb. I was hoping to take her to a restaurant or something. Most of them are closed, they don't have employees. It's two pronged. One's the COVID nonsense where people are collecting checks, so they're not going to work. They do that on unemployment before that anyway. And the other one is the housing issue. There's no affordable housing down there. There's a limited amount of land on an island. All these Yankees come down and build these multi-million dollar houses on any available land that there is and rent them to each other. And the locals who grew up there, lived there their whole life, have nowhere to live when they turn 18. There are no apartments. You have to own a house. You could go in there with a bunch of roommates, I suppose, but there's nothing available. Families have to leave the island who've been there five, six generations. Because there's no land, no homes. So that entry level worker doesn't even exist. They're like, oh, I would work in a restaurant, but I have nowhere to live. There are restaurants and even the food line. That's like the only franchise down there. The food line has bought uh, housing itself to put its employees in. Or they bust them in all the way from Elizabeth City. And what they started doing is they started renting their own houses. They got in the real estate business. And they're bringing people in from like Slovakia and China and stuff. They put them in a house for an extremely low amount of money. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't have enough employees to keep the store open. Isn't that amazing? 
Do the grocery stores where you live do that? Do they give people free housing? No. That is how bad the housing situation in Hatters is. It's not, uh, it's not you thinking, oh, my area is like that. Oh, there's lots of, we, no, 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 it is not. Do you actually have businesses paying for apartments for people or rental cottages? You don't. The food lion where you live or the Kroger or whatever is not paying for their workers' housing. It is in Hatteras. But the locals aren't in that gambit. They really, there's, it's unfixable. And now they've got places like in Rodanthe with houses falling in the water. They're empty. Just some Yankee built a house right on the beach. Now it's falling in the water because of beach erosion, also because of Yankees and people dredging for the Pirates Grove millionaires. They have zoning laws that say, yeah, you should not build 13 bedroom monstrosities or whatever. No, they're not going to do that. Because five of the six county commissioners live north of the bridge and only one is from the island. That's how it's rigged. They ought to segregate Dare County and join Hatteras and Okokoke together in Hyde County and make that northern half Dare County. They should secede. They have zero representation. And I'm telling you, the housing market there is so bad that you're going to have an entire generation of youth forced to leave and live somewhere else. And you're going to have all these businesses that the demand is there, the talent is there, the employment is not. And you know what they'll end up doing? These businesses are going to buy like a house and pack it with like 40 Mexicans and hire them to work. It's gotten so bad that businesses are subsidizing houses for people so that they can find employees. It's nuts. And a lot of businesses, it's not easy to just buy a house either. I mean, a lot of them can't. So they just close. And that's what's happening. All these restaurants and things are closed. You've got the price of food, especially down on the island where you got to transport everything in, except for fish. The price of food from the Biden price hike the price of diesel and gas contributes to that. You've got to fight against the Rona check, pay more than that, or they're going to stay home. You've got the entitlement attitude of the youth and no affordable housing. So no wonder houses fall in the ocean. Might as well. What a conundrum. You've got all these empty houses all winter and fall because they can rent and make more money in the summer than they can someone living there year-round. Of course, there's all this available land to put new housing on, but the government has come in and declared this all national park that never changed since the 1920s. You did not expand any of the land in the towns. And so they are oversaturated now and there's nowhere else to go. And they did not protect them with any kind of zoning laws to create homes that would be affordable. Not even close. I mean, there are multi, multi-million dollar homes built there in the housing bubble that are just sitting there. The bank couldn't liquidate them. And so now banks just own a bunch of empty houses that Yankees defaulted on. So there is an empty fucking house at the same time where people have nowhere to live. It's like China on a smaller scale. All right, going back to the other, the very fine people. I believe I did get all of these. 15, I believe. Okay, 15 there and 20. Jim Zeus gets the gold today. I would encourage you to practice. Don't wait till November and go, oh, that sucked. I would encourage you now to pressure your state legislator to pass voter ID law or attempt it. Make the governor veto it, whatever. Make them show their cards. You need photo ID to vote. Demand it. There is no argument, legitimate argument against voter ID. It is not Jim Crow laws to say you have to prove who you are to vote. You have to prove who you are for all kinds of other things. You need a license to drive a car with your ID and address on it. 
or to get married or do just just about anything join the army whatever you can do all these things voting oh, 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 oh. we don't want to we want to be racist hell you need voter id to rent a movie you used to i guess you do that digitally now It's going to be the point where you have to use your cards to buy stuff from the store, which is ID, by the way, but not to vote. Disgusting. To be a cop, you have to wipe your ass with the U.S. Constitution every day before you start your day at work, says Spartan 0000, Superior 1. In U.S., yeah, cops aren't like that all over the world. We get, This is an American problem, which comes from our culture, which comes from our media, which we need to fix. I added Reed Coverdale, the Jackman Brothers, and Scott Dawson on my sub stack. You can go follow them. If you go to my sub stack, it's not the most recent post, but the one before that has links to all their work. I can see a little man's trying to come in the room, so I'm going to go. Going to Osaka Castle with the boats today. Um, number two child has been waiting to do that forever. And he did his times tables of 37 yesterday. And now 30. the kid is a wizard in math. Maybe I'll make him my CPA. Join Odyssey. 8,441 followers there. Join the bit shoot. We're at 19,700 and something getting up to that 20,000 mark. Be great to just cross that mile mark or whatever. And the sub stack too. I think 4,000 free ones over there. We're on A&C report. The site might be down today while it's being worked on. Um, but it'll be back and hopefully better than ever. And hopefully not on a shared server with 216 other people. We shall see. And I'm still dealing with the banks. I'm physically going back to America in August. Mostly to deal with the damn bank situation. Don't ever, ever, ever use Truist Bank. Never. They are corrupt. They're run by Vanguard. Uh, if you have an account there and you know the headache of what happened when SunTrust and BBT merged. Close your account and join any other bank. Even another bad bank. I mean, Even Bank of America. They're the, like the lowest. Better than truest. Thank you, Donna, for those links. I'm going to jump on Telegram. So see you then. Peace. Our producer has the pride. Patriotic projectile party pop. Got some up in the brown people making trouble for the empire. Replace them with a charred freighter and a cloud of white smoke. So remember... Your next geostrategic boondoggle going awry? Don't call us, we'll call you. Introducing Cognitive, Cognitive Interrupter, Interrupter Alpha. Alpha. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Oh no. Oh yeah? No. Scientifically formulated by men who look like doctors. This supplement has been proven in over one and a half studies to heighten critical thinking while simultaneously preserving your myopic Abrahamic nationalist worldview.